Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Well, let's look at some feedback here. Talking Shop of Mania, this person says, was a better show than anything I have seen from WWE for at least five years. They will be very disappointed to hear that. What about this guy? Talking Shop of Mania is the greatest pay per view of all time. Not sure I'd go that far. Mike, did you see Talking Shop of Mania? I have not had a chance oh, to see Oh, bro, Shop what's going on here, no. buddy? Are you kidding me? I had some family things I was doing, and my brother, though, was watching it and was getting great enjoyment out of it. Was very happy to see that Chico El Luchador would not job to anyone again and was the winner of the Social Distance Battle Royal, as well as some of the other crazy things that took took place on the show. So I do look forward to well, seeing he it. Well, wasn't, he wasn't watching closely enough because Chico did do the job. He lost the title to Chavo. Well... Would you like to go ahead and fill us in on the I'm rest gonna fill you on this whole show. I didn't Please, take any notes. You. I sat down, I didn't do it right, because the show opened with them strongly encouraging everyone to drink when they watched the show. In fact, Gallo said, I went and I watched it the other day, sober, and I wasn't sure we should even put this on the air. But then I drank and it was great. And <laughs> it is abundantly clear that you will and this is from a lot of feedback that I've gotten. You will enjoy talking shop a mania a lot more if you've been drinking. Although, I was stone sober, and I laughed my ass off for 90 minutes. It was a 90-minute show. And, of course, they they were smart. They, they did their media tour, and their catchphrase was that it was going to be the worst pay-per-view of all time. They set out to do an awful show. They lowered your expectations all the way down to zero. And, of course, I mean, it's brilliant because a show like Heroes of Wrestling or Hell in a Cell, one of these shows that actually is one of the worst shows of all time, it's one of the worst shows of all time because they tried. They went out there and their idea was to put on a great pay-per-view. Their idea was to intrigue you and, and deliver on what they allegedly promised. And instead, it was awful, these shows. This one, they told you, this will be the worst show you've ever seen. And they kind of set out to do the worst show you've ever seen. But, I mean, unfortunately, you know what this show was? The WWE is not, for example. This show was professional wrestling. And let me tell you something. Years ago, it's going to be a weird analogy, but I don't care. Years ago, I used to drive down to Hillsboro, Oregon, every Saturday, three-and-a-half-hour drive. Myself, Vinny, Buddy Nate, Buddy Sonny, we would drive down there, and we would work for free for Tito Carrione. He ran a lucha promotion, Hillsboro, Oregon. Three-and-a-half hours there, three-and-a-half hours back, losing money every time. Why? Because we wanted to get some experience. But it was a lucha promotion. You know what I learned about that Lucha promotion? As bad... Think about, like, the worst American-style match that you've ever seen. You may have seen it on Talking Shop of Mania, for all I know. The worst American-style match is always better than the worst Lucha Libre match. You know how bad the worst Lucha Libre matches are? Inconceivably bad. And I saw a lot of those down there at Tito's shows in Hillsboro. What's my point? Well, my point is... The worst professional wrestling is so much better than the worst of sports entertainment. And last night, there was some bad pro wrestling on the show. But you know what? It was pro wrestling. And I saw guys go out there and get to just be themselves and cut unscripted promos and get in the ring and just do whatever they wanted and have fun. You know the show was for 90 minutes? It was fun and it was funny. Now... If Jim Cornette ever sees this show, he's going to probably die. Probably have a conniption fit. I mean, if you're somebody that doesn't like being the elite, if you don't like the comedy, if you don't like the inside jokes, if you don't like everything, basically. I mean, if you saw the wedding, or not the wedding, the funeral. They may have done a wedding for Vanguard 1, for all I know. But the funeral of Vanguard 1. I watched the funeral of Vanguard 1. I howled with laughter. If you were somebody that watched the funeral of Vanguard 1 and you thought, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Let me tell you something. 
do not watch Talk and Shop of Mania because you will, in fact, think it is the worst pay-per-view of all time. But if you loved the funeral of Vanguard 1 or a lot of the wackiness that you see on Being the Elite, you will love Talk and Shop of Mania. Guys are sitting there drinking, doing commentary on these matches, just burying everything that sucks. Felt like I was watching pay-per-views on my own here in my office. I loved it. I love that they were able to go out there and have some fun at their own expense and do what professional wrestling used to be, which was a whole bunch of really crazy people getting together and spreading some ideas and going out and they just do whatever they want and they sink or swim. That's what this was. I loved it. And if you didn't love it, that's great for you, but don't come after me. You're allowed to like whatever you want. And I love that show. It's my review. Saying that it was the epitome of professional wrestling? I don't know if I'd say it's the epitome. It, it was the but you know definition what it was? of professional wrestling? It was pro wrestling. Dude, if you're listening to this right now, or you're watching, it's actually if you're watching us on twitch.tv slash F4W video, and you're one of our Twitch subscribers, and some of this is even, you don't even have to be a subscriber, but during the commercial breaks on Twitch, what do you see? Well... You see some old wrestling matches from me. You see some old videos that Vinny and I shot. The the, the how Shoulders Torelli became Vinny V. Dude, that's what I watched last night. That's the kind of stuff that we used to do when wrestling was really fun. I had some stupid idea and we got a camera and we went out there and we just had fun. And we we called it in the ring and we just it was wrestling. This is what wrestling used to be. Now it's this weird-ass sports entertainment. Listen, I got nothing against Lacey Evans, but if you watch SmackDown on Friday, the Lacey Evans promo backstage in her goofy character, all uber-produced, just talking like nobody in the world, nobody on this planet, nobody on this planet in, in however many billion years, four billion years, not one person ever has has been anything like this this fake Lacey Evans character. Who, by the way, in real life, she's got like a, a character that very few have. But they give her this dumb character on television, and I watch it, and I'm like, no wonder everybody switches the channels when you when you go outside the ring. It's patently obvious. This stuff is so bad. A man talking chop mania Like, there's no one in this world like Sex Ferguson, but you know what? Sex Ferguson is a way more realistic character than this Lacey Evans I have to watch on SmackDown. Now, were there any good or great professional wrestling matches on the show, or was it all, as far as the fun and frivolity, is that what it, basically everything I was? I mean, there was a lot of fun and frivolity, but, you know, Chico El Luchador and, and, and Chavo Guerrero for the 24-7 title, I mean, that was better than probably half the empty arena matches we've seen. And it was mostly comedy, but at least they did stuff. They did their own commentary, which was even better. I mean, there was nothing... Look, if you want to see a good wrestling match, don't watch it, okay? But if you want to enjoy wacky professional wrestling... I, listen, all the th- I don't follow a lot, but our board, Twitch, my Twitter... I mean, there's been one guy who was really down on the show, and I don't even think he watched it. I think he was just mad at the idea of it. But <laughs> the vast majority of the people who watched it, they seem to have loved it. Perseer says, Talking Shop sucked but was also the greatest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, that was the idea. <laughs> that was the idea. Person says, Brian, I'm 40 years old. What the hell happened to wrestling? Is it all a joke now? I guess there's... I guess... I presume he's talking about talking Chop a Mania, but he might be talking about SmackDown. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe just wrestling in general. If he's 40 years old and hasn't been well in tune into it, yeah, I mean, if you grew up with some territory stuff and... Weren't a big fan of the Attitude Era. You'd probably hate where everything is gone. That's for sure. 